Number 17. Assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the concentration of all solute species in each of the following solutions of salts in contact with a solution containing a common ion. And then show that it is not appropriate, oh boy, <laughs> to neglect the changes in the initial concentration of the common ions. Fun. Okay. So KSP problem, right? They said that we have uh, magnesium oxalate, which is MgC2O4, and this compound is in 2.250 liters of a solution that's containing 8.56 grams of magnesium nitrate, which is MgNO32. Now, we can't do this problem without getting a solubility product, a KSP value, and the KSP value is always of the solid. MgC2O4 is the solid because of solubility rules. Oxalates are usually insoluble, especially when bound with magnesium. So since this is the solid, and this is what they want us to find, the concentration of these ions, that goes with the KSP value. But what is a KSP value without a balanced equation? It's nothing. So we have to write the balanced equation for what this is going to dissolve. It's going under dissolution. So we've seen these time and time again, right? Magnesium, Mg, SO4, SO4, where'd I get that from? <laughs> Mg, sometimes I make up my own compounds. Mg, C2, O4. That's a solid. And this is going to come to equilibrium because we're dealing with K values. The two ions, right? The split is between the magnesium and the polyatomic oxalate, right? So I have Mg, whoop, Mg, and then plus C2O4. Now, the easiest way to get the correct uh, charges is to kind of look on a periodic table. Remember, magnesium is in group two, so that's always going to be a plus two charge, right? Magnesium loves to be a plus two. And since there's one magnesium for every one oxalate, the charges have to balance. So if magnesium was a plus two, the oxalate is going to be a negative two charge. An oxalate is always a negative two charge, so it kind of, you know, makes sense. Now, they have charges, so they're aqueous, and while I'm writing these, I'm just looking to see if the equation is balanced, and it is already. So, we're just going to throw this, whoop, we're going to throw this over to this side, for now. We're going to use this equation, however, to start writing the KSP general expression. Remember, and uh, maybe I'll put it over here, the KSP is normally equal to just the products raised to their coefficients because no solids allowed, so no reactants allowed. So let's just write the formula. KSP would equal the concentration of the Mg2 plus times the concentration of the oxalate, the C2O4, and that's the two minus charge. They both uh, have no coefficients in the front, right? So that means that there's only one of them. So we can raise both of them to the first power, but raising anything to the first is the same number. So now we know the KSP value. The KSP was from the back of the textbook. That's seven times 10 to the negative seventh. But I don't know what the Mg or the oxalate value is. This is where we start putting in variables and using our ratios. But this is the part of the question where you go back to just make sure that you don't have any common ions. But in this case, they gave us another compound. We're saying that this solid is placed into a you know 2.25 liter of a some amount of magnesium nitrate. So... Magnesium nitrate, soluble, insoluble. Is it a solid or aqueous? Well, remember, according to your solubility rules, any compound that has a nitrate in it, which is the NO3, is always aqueous. It will always dissolve into its ions, 100%. So because of that, let's just write out what this breaks down into. So maybe I will put it over here. Mg, NO3, Two. This breaks down now 100% because it's aqueous. What was that? Thank you. 
into its two ions, and the break is between the magnesium and the nitrate. Polyatomics never break apart. So we have Mg plus NO3, right? Now let's just put the charges, right? Magnesium, group two, always a plus two charge. And nitrate, if we memorize our polyatomics, that's always a negative one charge. You could also find it out by taking the subscript and crisscrossing it back up. Now let's just balance it. Seems like I need two nitrates because there were two here. And then there's only one magnesium, so that's good. We have our charges here. So we have aqueous material. But the thing is, is that if I want to use these values and try to put it into our KSP expression, because that's where we're going, remember brackets mean molarity. And the formula for molarity is moles divided by liters, right? So they gave us the liters. They told us that this was two, maybe I'll put this over, 2.250. But the thing is, is that I don't know how many moles I have. Well, they gave me grams. I can go from grams to moles, right? That's pretty standard. That's a conversion. So maybe I'll just do the math over here. 8.156 grams of Mg NO32. Remember, if we want to go to moles of the same compound, so I'll just, whoop, I'll just put this over here. Mg NO32. Remember, grams to moles just divide by the molar mass, mm. So I'm going to go to that periodic table to calculate what the molar mass is of MgNO32. So let's see what we get. 24.31 plus, I have two nitrogens, so 2 times 14.01, and then plus 6 oxygens. So I get 148.33 grams per moles. So we're going to take that 8.156 divided by 148.33. And we're not at the end answer, so... I am just going to leave some significant digits, 0 0.05499, and that's going to go to the moles, 0 0.05499. And once I do this calculation, that will be the molarity of the compound that I started with, the MgNO32. 0 0.05499 divided by 2.25, and I get 0 0.02444, and that's molarity. So just pause the video if you need uh, this math, because it's going bye-bye, unfortunately. Let's just, whoop, let's just grab it and go. Goodbye. Because now, remember, only Mg2 plus and the C2O4 minus is going in here. Between these two compounds, which ion is the common one? Common ions mean that you have the same ion in both equations. So is it the magnesium that's in both equations or the C2O4, right, if we're looking at the top? It's the magnesium. So in essence, I don't even care about the nitrate, right? Don't do more math than you have to. So just take your coefficients and just say, hey, look, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So whatever this number is, maybe I'll write this a little bit better, this would have to be the same because it's a one-to-one. -one. So that means that I have an originally 0 0.02444 molarity of the magnesium. And if this was already in the solution, this is your initial concentration. And whenever you say the word initial, we have to write an ice table. I know. So let's just write it out. We have I-C-E. Remember, solids don't get included in your KSP. So for case and purposes here, I'm just going to not care about this section. And initially, we started 
with 0 0.0244 molarity. So that's the number that goes here. We didn't start off with any oxalate, so that's 0. And then remember, your change is the plus x. So you can only go up from there. So that would be plus x. There's only one of them, so plus 1x. And then the same thing here, plus x. Combine the initial and the change. So we get 0 0.02444 plus x as my magnesium equilibrium concentration and just x for my oxalate. So now I know that my magnesium is going to be 0 0.02444 plus x, and then this would just be the x value. Now, generally, what we like to do is we like to assume that whatever you're starting with, the change is not going to be so great and that it's not going to move this number, right? The change is going to be very, very small. It just helps with the math. So in this case, we can say that probably at equilibrium, our number might be close to this. So I can basically get rid of this plus x. In essence, you're going to do the math and solve for x and just see if we can get away with that easier math. That's called the 5% rule, but the first thing we have to find is the x value. So let's go for it. 7 times 10 to the negative 7th equals, whoa. Okay, there we go, equals the 0 0.02444 times x. And let's just see what we get for x, right? If we just solve, divide, right? 7 times 10 to the negative 7 divided by 0 0.02444. I get 2.86 times 10 to the negative 5th. Okay, now this is where we do our, tr our, our check. It's called the 5% rule. And what we do is we take the x value and we divide it by the initial that we started with, so the 0 0.02444 in this case, and we times it by 100. If this value is 5 or less, we assumed correct and we can keep that x value. However, if we get more than 5%, we have to go back and include that plus x, and then the math is going to be a little bit challenging. So fingers crossed, I mean, they're, they're already setting us up that it's not appropriate, but let's just see what we get. So 2.86 times 10 to the negative 5th divided by 0 0.02444 times 100. Huh. Hold on here. This looks good. Are they tricking us? Let's just see. 2.86 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 0 0.02444 times 100. We don't even get 1%. Huh. That's interesting. I just want to double check my math because I don't know why this would be in here. We can neglect, I mean, we can get rid of the X and then we're good to go. But let's just calculate... Um, I'm just going to quickly calculate that magnesium nitrate value. So this is basically where if we come to something that makes, you know, doesn't make sense as what they're setting us up for in this question, um, I'm just going to quickly just figure out that magnesium value again. So Mg was 24.31 plus 2 times 14.01 and then plus 6 times 16. I'm going to take the 8.156, divide it by that number again, just to make sure. I mean, yeah, everything is coming out interesting. Yeah, no, no, no problems here. And it's 0 0.02, that's what I had, 0 0.02444, 7 times 10 to the negative 7, divided by 0 0.02444. Yeah. Okay, so technically, this checks out, which means that I can just leave this as my x value. So all we have to do is now just go back to your equilibrium line and just plug in x for your x's. And that's what the question was asking for. Calculate the concentrations. So for mg, 2 plus... At equilibrium, it was 0 
444 plus x, right? Because remember, this x value is a molarity. So um, we have, if I plug that x in, 0 0.02444 plus 2.86 times 10 to the negative fifth. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't even change it. So 0 0.02444 molarity. Actually, it changes it 0.2447. So we go up a little bit. And then if we do the oxalate, C2O4, 2 minus, well, that was just X. So that's the 2.86 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. And these, whoop, these are your two answers. So in this case, I don't know, guys, what do you think? I, since it passes the 5% rule, we can neglect that X value and just take that X. So that works good for me. What do you think? Thank you for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and I hope you guys are doing well out there. Keep studying hard, and I will see you in future lessons. Okay, bye-bye.